Do you trust Mike Pence at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? Um, I don't trust Mike Pence, uh, period. Let me ask you, do you trust Bill Barr at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? No. Do you trust Mark Meadows at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? No. You don't trust the 60 courts that Trump brought evidence to? No. So it makes me worry when every single court, every single institution, every single person in America that's not Donald Trump or Mike Lindell are lying to you. And I, I'm going to go back to my point. When you weigh the credibility of these people, do I believe every single institution, which sure, they're flawed, or do I trust Mike Lindell? Probably the institutions that are upholding our democracy, right? Uh, I, I would say that the institutions that are upholding our democracy aren't upholding our democracy. Expand on that. Uh, what we see is a rise of communism all over the United States. And so uh, if you go and look at what the Frankfurt School mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in Frankfurt mm -hmm. uh, had, they have 11 main points that they want to be involved in every single facet of society. What's the definition of communism in your eyes? I don't have the definition of communism all over. I have the points, you know, what these things look like. Mm -hmm. I don't have the definition. Yeah, that's okay. If you've ever wanted to see a Gen Z liberal debate a Gen Z Trump supporter, then this episode is for you. On top of that, this dude is Roger Stone's nephew, which I think will become pretty apparent as the interview goes on. But the fact that he thinks communism has infiltrated every institution in America, yet can't define communism, is both scary and indicative of the MAGA mindset. I think people like Vladimir Putin are salivating when they see young Americans like this having no faith in our institutions and undermining our institutions for him because ultimately Vladimir Putin's goal is to destabilize the West from the inside and people like this and the whole MAGA movement in general are playing into his hand perfectly. So strap in, make sure to leave a like below and subscribe to Midas Touch. Plus my channel is in the description. Let's hit it. Uh, Eric Trump, Pastor Mark Burns, and my uncle Roger Stone. Uh, Roger Stone's your uncle? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. You should have lied with that. That's crazy. So can we expand on this idea that the election was stolen real quick? What evidence do you have of that? I want to hear it. Uh, I, I don't have all the data off the top of my head. I do have many friends, uh, people like Captain Seth Keschel. Uh, many people will laugh at this. I am friends with uh, Mike Lindell as well. Oh, wow. uh, I, I'm friends with all of the people who are doing the election fraud analysis stuff. I've looked at it. I don't understand it. But what we've seen is, um, so the 2000 Mules movie, people want to say, oh, that, that was garbage, that was whatever. There's countless hours and hours and hours and hours of video proof, of video evidence of people ballot stuffing yeah. that's a, that, that, that shouldn't be legal uh, it, it's wrong it's yeah. immoral uh, but it was happening Here's my concern with this, right? So I think any amount of voter fraud should be looked into and should be squashed. That's not okay. But the problem is Donald Trump took 62 cases to different courts around the country. Every single case was rejected. He didn't win one. Does that ever scare you or make you think? Uh, the, the reason why those cases were rejected are, uh, is they didn't even get looked at. The, the courts refused to look at them uh, based on standing, but they didn't even know what the standing was because they didn't look at it. The, the, all of the evidence that you talked about was looked at in court. For example, have you ever seen the video of the ballot boxes being pulled out from under the table? Yes, sir. Do you remember what happened when that video was brought to court? No, I don't know. So they brought that to court, and there's this 10-second clip. We were just talking about 10-second clips earlier. There's a 10-second clip where they pull the ballot boxes out, and it looks really bad. Mm -hmm. But then when the judge looked at the 16 hours of footage from that whole day, he saw that earlier in the day it was placed there completely legitimately by the Democrat and Republican poll clerks, because you have to combine. Democrats and Republicans have to work together. So we see a pattern that arises where every single time some evidence is brought to courts, like an actual legitimate court, and not just in a documentary. It's not just shown in a documentary, it's brought to a legitimate court, it gets shot down. And that kind of scares me. Uh, I don't know if it scares, I think it scares me in the fact that, um, you know, I think we disagree on this. That's fine. Um, there were many cases, most cases that, that weren't even looked at. Mm -hmm. that, that's just the fact. He okay. keeps saying these are just the facts, but his facts are wrong. Out of the 60 plus court cases that Trump and his team brought, 20 were dismissed before a hearing on merits, 14 were voluntarily dismissed by Trump and his supporters, and 30 cases included a hearing on the merits but had no evidence to back up any of the claims. So I point into a concrete example. The most popular one they use are the suitcases being pulled out, and that's such an easy one to debunk. Right when the judge looked at the footage, he understood that this was a miscommunication in the precinct, not some massive widespread scheme to overturn the election. Yeah. Uh, mathematicians, scientists, they've looked into this stuff, they understand what's going on, then there's also the machines, as I talked about, Mike Lindell I'm friends with. I guess when looking at these things, you have to weigh the credibility of each source, right? So I want, I want to ask you, do you trust Mike Pence at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? 
Um, I don't trust Mike Pence, uh, period. Let me ask you, do you trust Bill Barr at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? No. Do you trust Mark Meadows at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? No. You don't trust the 60 courts that Trump brought evidence to? No. You guys already know how this part ends, so let's skip ahead to the topic of Gen Z. Well, we see, uh, I don't have all 11 points off the top of my head, uh, an uprising of, of sexual deviance that is being taught to children. Yeah. We see that in, in, in schools all over the mm -hmm. place, pornography in schools. I've looked at this. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've seen it with my, my own eyes. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. The it's, pornography? It, yes. Um, it, it, not that, uh, um, in books. The next election, the top thing on my, on my head, is Generation Z. Mm -hmm. What we see right now is indoctrination of gener, of Generation Z all over the place. And what the DNC has done is they've taken millions and millions of dollars uh, to put into TikTok influencers so they can indoctrinate my generation with their lies and propaganda. And 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 President Trump is one of the greatest presidents of all time. Yeah. And I believe that if he gets behind this Generation Z movement and tries to, uh, you know, do something about it and helps us get involved, then it's going to change the trajectory of our country. Because if we don't have Generation Z voting for President Trump, we're going to lose our country. So I have a few questions. First of all, how old are you? 19 years old. Nice. So I'm 21. I'm also Gen Z. And I have similar beliefs, but from a different standpoint, right? I also want to ask, are you a, are you a conservative influencer? I, I, yes, I am. You're almost right. TikTok is definitely pervasive and spreads a lot of misinformation, but I don't think the liberal movement um, from Gen Z can be blamed on TikTok. So if you look at the broader trends, Gen Z is overwhelmingly progressive, right? Like 60% of us vote blue, like 80% of us support gay marriage, like 80% believe in climate change. These are all core tenets of our generation. So are there are any of those things you disagree with? No, um, I, 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 I... I don't disagree with you. My point was that while, yes, TikTok is ripe for misinformation, he's sort of right about that, the liberal Gen Z movement can't be blamed on TikTok. You can look at polls from before that app even hit the mainstream, and you'll see that we overwhelmingly support things like gay marriage or reproductive rights, and we overwhelmingly vote for blue candidates. Like I said, these are all core tenets of our generation. We're naturally starting from a more progressive point than generations before us, so this idea that we're just now being indoctrinated by liberalism is not true at all. As a Gen Gen Z Trump supporter, why do you like him so much? I like President Trump because he actually got stuff done, despite the fact that they say, oh, we didn't get anything done, oh, we didn't do the border, oh, we didn't do this or that. No, he actually got stuff done. What did he get done that you enjoy? Uh, the lowest unemployment rate of all time, mm -hmm. low taxes, low gas uh, gas prices, uh, low grocery. So, so something that most people don't understand is the higher the gas prices, that means that the higher the grocery prices. Yeah. The reason why is because you need gas to get the groceries to other places. I didn't know that. I just, uh, you're telling me now for the first time. Can you okay. point to a specific policy that Trump passed that caused these low prices? Because as far as I'm aware, the big thing that he passed was tax cuts for really large corporations, which I'm not sure if that directly if translates to what you're saying. I think, uh, I, I'm not sure as far as what the, the, the tax policy is off the top of my head. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but what I do know is that what we see right now is a worse economy for everybody. Yeah. You know, my parents are struggling right now. Course, um, yeah. If it weren't for my both of my parents having two having jobs, we'd be in a really, really, really deep hole yeah. that we weren't in before the Joe Biden administration. Yeah. And that's how it is for for every American all over the place, mm -hmm. unless you're a rich, uh, unless you're a rich person. Well, to be fair, things started to get really bad under Trump during COVID, right? That's when the economy really started to tank. And I guess my main concern with this, with the idea that Trump single-handedly spurred economic growth is that if you look at any single economic indicator, all of the charts like unemployment, all of them stay the exact same from Obama's presidency to Trump's. It stays on the exact same trajectory. So I feel like the argument could be made that Trump's policies were just a continuation of Obama's policies. Because you can't point to any specific, and that's fine, I'm not going to press you on like a specific thing, but there's no specific policies basically that he put into place other than these massive tax cuts. So, so you mentioned COVID-19, and, yeah. and that's a fair point that, you know, obviously every economy all over the place kind of started to drop under COVID-19. Mm -hmm. However, under the President Trump administration, after a few months, the economy started to rise again, mm -hmm. and it was getting better. Gas prices went higher during COVID, mm -hmm. and then at the end of President Trump's uh, uh, presidency, they went down again, grocery prices went down again, all of the stuff went down again. And then when President Biden comes into office, you know, it's at, you know, 
two dollars or so um, then it starts going up so just a few things this guy and I obviously disagree on a lot but the fact that we were able to have a respectful conversation and the fact that he seems a little bit more malleable than some of his older Trump supporter peers makes me want to do a one hour sit down with him where we go through the sources and we try to figure this out so if you'd be interested in seeing that all you have to do is leave a like and let us know in the comments and we can make that happen also this video was recorded back in December and as we were speaking the stock market was hitting all-time highs since then inflation has reduced and consumer sentiment has increased so I'm sure some Americans still feel the effects of inflation it sucks for everyone but by all means Biden's economic policy has been a success my name is Adam Mockler don't forget to leave a like on the video let's get Midas touch to 3 million subscribers and let's get my personal channel to 100,000 subscribers thank you and have a great day